really cool place to spend time, thought, and energy around uh, finding peace, which is really ultimately the goal here. So uh, ideally, you should be just seeing the screen that says, of course, is Miracles Lesson 30. Is that correct? You can give me a thumbs up because I still have you. Perfect. Thanks, Nancy. All right. So uh, so uh, let's, let's take a look at, um, there we go. Just a little bit of a review again of, of some of the lessons as we led up to where we're going to be today. Um, last Friday, we ended the week on this one. I do not know what anything is for. So we kind of launched ourselves into the weekend being a little um, maybe lost, for lack of a better way of saying it. And then on Monday, we went into some of the most difficult stuff I think we've looked at so far. Uh, the first one was that my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. Uh, and that was Monday's lesson. On Tuesday, then, we talked about above all else I want to see. So we started moving towards that seeing piece. And, and we, we talked about vision. And one step further, we talked about true vision. And we're going to go a little bit further with that today. So that was uh, on uh, Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we looked at this one and worked with it. Above all else, I want to see things differently. I want to see things differently. And then the lesson from yesterday was God is in everything I see. So uh, from yesterday's lesson, I'm just kind of curious, uh, how did the exercise go for you throughout the day yesterday when the lesson was God is in everything I see? God is in this, uh, this you know, bottle of, uh, of, I don't know what, a body armor. Uh, God, you know, it, you weren't going to discriminate at all or filter. It was wherever your eyes gazed and, and, and settled upon, that's what you were going to do. So how did that work for anyone? Uh, did you have something that happened for you that you'd like to share? This one was not good for me. <laughs> not good, okay. No, um, I had all of the problems that were that were warned, I guess, about yesterday, like in the, in the text, it was like, you might have problems with this. And I did, and it was, no matter how much I wanted to focus on the object, like my brain just kept going to the like, the concept of God, and I tried to replace it with the universe because I, I feel like God's, a, for me, God feels like a very loaded term. Um, so I think that's part of the reason that I struggled with it. Um, but it, I, I kept going back to that idea of like, I don't know, I just felt like I, what do we do with it? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it just ended up being very negative for me. Okay. Okay. Well, and, and you're right, though. I mean, it, we war it warned us about that, right? That it might bring up that stuff. You know, one of the things I just share with everyone, and, and it alluded to it briefly in the lesson explanation yesterday, you know, whether it's formal religion of some sort um, or a number of other ways that there's a, I think there's a belief in most of us that there's something higher than, the, than us, right? So uh, Wayne Dyer, who I've done, a, I've read a lot of his material, he talked about it in The Power of Intention, and he called it the source, the source and so or the one is the other way I've seen it referred to and so if you get if you struggle with the, the phrase or the t term God because of maybe something from uh, the past that may be another way to look at it if if you do have that belief that there is something bigger than us here on earth and and so that's really maybe another way to, to go and then and then also what's cool about that Lynn Marie is that you recognized it you saw that and you had awareness about it because, you know, and there's nothing right or wrong around any of it. It's just a matter of uh, the awareness actually helps you maybe make choices that would leave you feeling better. I don't know. It's no, just... yeah. So like, I'm, I'm so glad that I, I did the exercise um, and I, I attempted, to, you know, to, to do it the, um, the six times. And one time, like, I feel like I almost got to where I was supposed to be and it felt like, like progress. But I do like that idea of the referring to the source instead of of um a god for for people like like me that makes maybe more, a little bit more yeah you know and i and i think there's a fair amount of us that have come through uh like some formal religious training that maybe don't hold it uh we may have things deep-seated that uh you know that mess with us when we start using those that phraseology again and so yeah find another term uh based on what what the belief you have is and see how that is because we're not saying you have to do this verbatim right so, so that might be something to look at uh, so, uh, so today, uh, so anyone else have anything from yesterday's lesson? I did, Darren. Go ahead. Um, I was kind of having a tough day too, and I have this book called My Utmost for His Highest, so I just pulled it out and went to the 20th, and it just said, whenever uh, um, anything begins to disintegrate in your life with Jesus Christ, turn to him at once, asking him to reestablish your 
you and never never allow anything to remain in your life that's uh, causing you the unrest and it, it was just kind of correlated with what you were saying and um, so I just read that and, and then just went on my day and it actually ended up being a better day so perfect um, just took some time well and, and I'm curious Michelle in the um, in what you read does it it kind of brings validation doesn't it to yeah. what you're working on yeah it did it did because it, it really um, you know messed with what what the lesson was so yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, I caught myself a number of times yesterday doing that, uh, that visual lesson, and it was the oddest things that my eyes would just rest upon, and I would just do it. So I was, uh, last night I, I hit a golf ball into the edge of the driving range, and so I'm out there looking for the one white ball in the sea of all the yellow balls, which were the driving range balls, and all of a sudden I saw a pine cone. And I just stopped and I did that there. You know, it's like so. Uh, and, it, and what happened though, and this is what's so cool, because you can still do any of these exercises any time past this too. It just kind of brought a peace to me. Like there was a, there was a calmness that happened uh, when I stopped and did that. And, uh, and that may be something you'll, you'll, you'll notice if you continue that lesson as well. So today's lesson, thanks for the sharing, by the way. Um, today's lesson... Um, is uh, on, on the same line of where we began with yesterday. So uh, it is, uh, it's just taking it one step further. And so today's lesson, I think I've got a couple, of, yeah, yesterday's slides here. Yeah, let's just get through those. Um, and, and just a reminder, remember we said, don't, don't judge what you looked at. I, you know, I saw God in a pine cone yesterday, last night. You know, that's, uh, but today's lesson for the weekend is God is in everything I see because God is in my mind, or the source, or the creator, or the one is in my mind. So that's our lesson as we move into the weekend. And it says the idea for today that God is everywhere I see because God is in my mind is the springboard for vision. From this idea, we will, uh, that God is in everything I see because God is in my mind, Will the world open up before you and you will look upon the world and see in the world what you have never seen before? Nor will what you saw before be even faintly visible to you. So it's a change completely. Today we're trying to use a new kind of uh, quote-unquote projection. We're not attempting to get rid of what we do not like by seeing what we do not like outside our mind. So let me say that again. So today we start trying to use a new kind of projection. We are not attempting to get rid of what we do not like by seeing what we do not like outside our mind. Instead, we are trying to see in the world what is in our minds and what we want to recognize in there in our minds. So it's an inward kind of focus. Thus, we're trying to join with what we see rather than keeping what we see apart from us. Now, we've talked about this before, that when we keep things apart, that's our egoic mind at work, right? The ego is about separation. The ego is about standing out. The ego is about protecting you from uh, the physical you from uh, whatever could harm you. And so this is about uh, not working in your egoic mind. It's about silencing that. Uh, that's, uh, so it goes on to say this. Thus, we're up to trying uh, to join with what we see rather than keeping what we see apart from us. Joining with what you see is the fundamental difference between vision and the way you see. Today's idea should be applied as often as possible throughout the day. So this isn't a timer. This isn't six times a day. This isn't once every half hour. It's whenever you can and as often as you can. Whenever you have a moment or so, repeat this statement that God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. Repeat it to yourself slowly, looking about you, and then try to realize that the idea applies to everything you do see now, or could see now, if everything were within the range of your sight. Now, real vision is not limited to concepts such as near or far. To help begin to use, uh, to get used to this idea that God is in everything I see, uh, uh, and God, because God is in my mind, try to think of things beyond your present range as well as those things you can actually see as you apply today's idea. So 
God is in everything I see because God is in my mind doesn't pertain only to the thing that you can physically see. It's challenging us to go beyond that and, and look further than that and, and find it there. So uh, real vision is not only unlimited by space and distance, but real vision does not depend on the body's eyes as well. The mind is real vision's only source. Let me say that again. Your mind is real vision's only source. To aid in helping you to become more accustomed to this idea that God is in everything I see because God is in my mind, devote several practice periods to applying today's ideas with your eyes closed. So this is about, again, this is separating what the physical of your eyes seeing can be. So we're going to ask you to do this with your eyes closed using whatever subjects come to mind. Now, I think the languaging is, here is interesting. So it's using whatever subjects come to mind and looking within rather than without. Today's idea that God is in everything I see because God is in my mind applies equally to both what you see and your thoughts within your own mind. So it's, uh, it's, your, it's your thoughts and what you see. So again, eyes closed, whatever comes to mind and looking within rather than looking without. So I'm going to break it down a little bit further. It says, the lesson clearly states the idea that we have mentioned in most of the previous lessons. Your mind is the power source for vision and the world that you perceive. So what you perceive to be your outer world is actually a reflection of your mind's inner state. Real vision is not limited by space, distance, or the body's eyes. The mind is the only source of true vision. This is why you are asked to devote several practice periods applying today's idea that God is in everything I see because God is in my mind with your eyes closed. That's why we're asking that you do it that way. If God is everywhere, as stated in Lesson 29, God must be within your mind. See, we're, we're all familiar with the idea of an inner guide, some inner voice within you that tells you what is right and what's wrong. It is a voice that holds you to a higher, nobler standard and represents your better half. Some might call it your conscience. Others, intuition, inner guide, the Holy Spirit, your higher self, a guardian angel, or the voice of God. Regardless of what you call it, that inner voice always seems to represent and know your true best interest. This inner voice guides, directs, and moves you towards a higher and nobler vision of who you really are. Whether or not we follow that inner guidance, we have all felt its presence. So the inner voice represents a thought system that is based on a totally different belief system. It understands the big picture and it knows the truth of who you really are. It recognizes that you are not a body but rather a spirit. It knows and can relate currently, current events to the big picture. It seeks to join, not separate, you from another. It understands the interrelationship of all the parts to the whole and your role in that relationship. In this dimension of time and space, your inner guide utilizes a big picture thought system that is based on love and forgiveness. It knows that you are, in a, you are a spiritual being having a human experience. It, its mission is to help you live in this fear-based world without being a source for the fear-based world. Rather than argue for your ego's limitations, it calls for you to re reclaim your spiritual magnificence. That phrase that, uh, that we're a spiritual being having a physical experience is a powerful one, at least for me. Uh, and so I want to make sure we don't miss that one. The lesson goes on to say this. Um, you know, this lesson also talks about a different type of projection. Psychologists often refer to our mind's ability to transfer its own negative thoughts from our own mind and see those negative thoughts reflected in our outside world. That's the projection. This is a coping mechanism that we use in order to live with our quote-unquote evil side. Instead of seeing a negative trait within ourselves, our mind now sees that same trait outside of us in another. Since that trait is recognized by your mind to be outside of you, you are no longer responsible for it. So you do not have to deal with correcting your own mind. You get to blame another and claim that it's not your fault. It's 
really, it's, it's the way that we deal with it and we show up as victim quite often. Now, in A Course of Miracles, it states this. By projecting or transferring your negative fear-based thinking from your egoic mind, you create your own fear-based world. So that projection is not a good one. You get to claim that you are an innocent victim in the world you created. So remember that that is the beginning of victim speak when we do that. And yet our, it's our egoic mind's way of, uh, of coping. Here's the one thing I think uh, I would always uh, remember in this statement of, um, you know, in that, 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 that it, our inner voice is really our good. And we do have good and evil both. And that is that uh, we are all flawed. Every one of us is. And so be okay with that. You know, and versus saying, I've got to be perfect. So a lesson of God is in everything I see in my mind. That's going to be the, the takeaway for today and through the weekend. And again, I love that this is what we've got going into the weekend because this gets you just play with this thought uh, a lot. And there's no set times. Just remember it's with your eyes closed. So uh, with that, any uh, thoughts or questions on the lesson for today or any of the others we've covered so far this week? Any last announcements before we head through the rest of our great Friday? All right, everyone, thanks for being with me. We will, um, if I don't see you before, I'll see you Monday morning. We'll pick this up again at 9 a.m. So have an awesome weekend. Have a great day today, and uh, we'll see you then. You too, Darren. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks for being with us.